How's it going, everybody? Andrew Zarian here, Wrestling Observer Live. We're here every day, Monday through Friday, 3 p.m. Eastern, and Sundays, 6 p.m. Eastern. Notice how I said Eastern instead of East. Maybe that's an East Coast thing. I don't know. I'm used to saying East, but my co-host today on the show, which I'm going to bring in after the uh, first segment, Lance Storm from Impact Wrestling. I believe he starts this week. He's going to be our co-host today to talk about everything that's going on in professional wrestling. A lot of stuff, obviously, still that Royal Rumble aftermath is still happening here, (laughs) which is wild to me. Uh, We have a lot to talk about, obviously. Uh, WWE morale problem, apparently. Sean Ross Sapp of Fightful put out an article today discussing the uh, morale issue happening in the locker room. I want to talk about that. Obviously, I want to talk to Lance because he's been in that locker room. He's been in many locker rooms. And, you know, these things come and go, and sometimes it's better, sometimes it's worse. But it seems like right now we're we're at we're at the, the bad point. Obviously, that results from uh, SmackDown and Rampage for uh, Friday. Matt Cardona wins the NWA Heavyweight, the World Heavyweight Championship. We're going to talk about that. Darby Allen presented Nick Wayne with an AEW contract at the Defy Show yesterday. Nick Wayne, 16 years old. Got a contract to AEW. There's some uh, stipulations with that, right? He has to finish high school first. He has to do a bunch of stuff first before he gets to go there. Uh, Obviously, we have all that talk. And, of course, I want to talk to Lance about what's going on with him. Impact Wrestling has been on a hot streak right now. Ratings are improving every week. I believe this week was the highest rating in a very long time. 128,000 viewers on Access. You know, you may think, you know, that's that's not a million that's not a half a million, but it's something here. And they're rebuilding the product. And I think they've done a tremendous job at that. A uh, lot of lot of stuff to talk about today. I do have a question for you guys. Actually, here's, here's what I'm going to do. It's not so much a question. Submit your questions to us. Use the hashtag AskWOL on social media. And we'll do our best to answer them. Coming back from the break, Lance Storm, everybody. Wrestling Observer Live. Andrew Zarian here. We'll be right back after this. Wrestling Observer Live. Andrew Zarian here. Sunday edition of the show. With me, my co-host. One of my favorite co-hosts, actually. Second time on the show. Lance Storm. What's going on, Lance? Not too much. Just a uh, quiet Saturday in Calgary, Alberta, Canada. Or Sunday, I guess. Missed today. Uh, How cold is it there? Actually, we've been having... Since the new year, the warmest winter I can remember were, I think, most days 10 to 15 Celsius, which would be 40 to 50 Fahrenheit every day. Oh, that's not bad. That's actually pretty warm. Yeah, there's no snow. It's great. Yeah, we've been getting snow all day here in New York City. So uh, I I think we switched switched locations for the day. Uh, Lance, (laughs) I want to first of all, I want to congratulate you. Uh, Impact Wrestling, you're starting, I believe, this week. Yeah, I'm at No Surrender on Saturday. I fly out on Friday. Very, uh, very cool. You're going to be there for No Surrender. Uh, you know, this is, you know, you're, you're a producer there, coach there, right? It says it in your bio. Sure, yeah. A little of everything. Um, you know, you were you were at WWE uh, before, you know, during prior to the pandemic. Uh, and how different do you think this job is going to be for you as far as producing the content? Well, I did, I think, three TV tapings for Impact as a producer before I went back to WWE. So it's like, I know what I'm getting into. And for the most part, the job is the same. It's just, it's a little easier to get done with the uh, fewer levels of people to go through to get things approved. You know, I'm I'm a pretty good friend of Scott Demore, so it's it's a little easier to uh, talk to Scott Demore, a much more relaxed uh, atmosphere, shall we say. (laughs) <laughs> so that that's a great segue into our first topic here, and that's uh, an article that was put out by Sean Ross Sapp uh, regarding morale issues. And you know, you've been in—I think the last time you came on, came on, we were we were kind of talking about the differences in the in the locker rooms, uh, different times, different decades, different companies. And you've been in—I mean, obviously, you've been in Impact, you've wrestled there, uh, you know, TNA. You've you've seen what's going, what happened there. You've ECW, WCW, WWE. You know, these things come and go and uh, a lot of eyeballs on WWE right now because of the debacle that was the Royal Rumble. 
you know, how common is this that you start seeing, you know, the morale drop and then it goes up again? Uh, what What is your experience with this? Well, I, I think with me and, and again, even during my, my last run with WWE, it's I think there's a level of frustration that brings morale down when things are constantly changing. Because I know that's when I was least happy as a producer, when you think you know what you're doing and you start putting effort towards that and then it changes and then it changes. And that frustration of never knowing for sure what's got to be done or what they want. And that's where your morale comes down because you don't feel like you're putting out your best work because you know, all day at television, if something's changing and you're in a scramble and you're, you're, you know, it ends up being more about just trying to get it done in time than actually enjoying your work. And for most wrestlers, it's like the job, the art, whatever you want to call it. It's like, that is your joy. And yeah. if you don't get to relax and do that to your best ability, the joy goes away. So uh, the story here, WWE town frustrated with, a, the direction of the company, a veteran was quoted as saying, quote, nothing matters outside of four people, maybe. They never felt less heard, and their attempts to speak with Vince go ignored. Some town believe WWE is eventually uh, getting ready to sell. I mean, we've heard this for a while. But, you know, like, how accessible was Vince when you were there to the talent? You know, and obviously, some talent has more access than other talent. I mean... Like, you know, I'm give you a great example. Uh, I, my consulting company, I have numerous clients uh, outside of the wrestling, right? My my shoot gig. Uh, and sometimes I pay more attention to certain clients that I feel that I'm. it's getting different results. Other ones I put in more effort to. You know, these are normal, common things. But how accessible is Vince to a mid card guy? You know, someone coming up. That That's the impossible question to answer. Because it's different for absolutely everybody. You know, everybody has a different level of friendship, contact with Vince. And the busier the day gets or the more time Vince has to spend with those above you, the less you get. So, you know, it's it's impossible to say how much because it, it all comes down to your relationship or how brave you are with trying to jump the line and get ahead of producers and everyone else that has to talk to Vince. Yeah, I, I find it uh, interesting, you know, when it's almost like, you know, when situations like this arise, you know, it becomes a, a, a snowball that keeps getting bigger and bigger and it turns into an avalanche. Uh, you know, listen, at this point, they've made the most money that they've ever made as a company. There was another story that came out that Vince is very happy with the product, apparently, and he doesn't see a problem. I don't know how accurate that is. Uh, I would never I don't think that he's a person that that feels that things are ever perfect uh, with with everything I've heard about him. You know, this constant growth and constant change happening. Uh, I, I think when you it's a tale of two stories here. And one is what's being presented on television to the core audience. And the other one is what's being presented to the business, to the investors. And, you know, if you're looking as, as a company, as an investor front, uh, you're going to say, my God, I would be thrilled with the amount of revenue that they're generating. But these are guys that are not necessarily familiar with the TV product. So, you know, it goes, it's, it's two different stories here. Yeah, and I think more than ever before, wrestlers are more concerned about their match quality, the, the product that's getting put out, and probably more than ever before, at least in WWE, because the way income is structured now, it matters even less. So I think there's a, a conflict in what talent perceive as important and yeah. the company sees as important. And again, it's nobody's fault, but when your income is set, you're less concerned with the product quite probably. But I think more than ever before, wrestlers are more concerned with how they are portrayed on television, how the product looks, where I think if you went back to the 80s, as long as everybody was making money, I don't think the boys would have cared. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it, that, it, now it's a different story, right? It is. It's just a different mentality, I think, than ever before for the talent. And it's in an era where with the money guaranteed, it's like it's not as important to have those angles that really grip people. And I think that's what the talent really want. But it's 
I can see where those that are, you know, counting the bank accounts don't care as much. Did you did you ever feel like that over there when you were performing over there when you went over that, you know, what what was the feel then? What did was it the same type of complaints that that we see today? No, it was it was different. Like it it was I think too it was hard because when I first came over, right, it's the invasion and there was a I don't know if conflict's the word, but uh we're trying to fit in, we're be trying to become a part of this new family, and not all of the new family was welcoming. So it was it was you were more concerned with that and you didn't you know, the WCW guys were just trying to fit in and be a part of something where we're not going to be running to the office complaining about stuff. And, you know, the WWE locker room, I think right before the invasion was probably the best morale they'd ever had, you know, riding the wave of Austin McMahon and making more money than anyone had ever dreamt of making before. So on the whole, the WWE locker room morale was great and it was us just trying to fit into it. So it was a completely different situation. You know, yeah. Before we go to a break, you got my spidey senses tingling. Every time I, I I hear invasion, I I've been trying to fantasy book that invasion storyline for the last seven years on the air, <laughs> and every time I think I've gotten it down, I I realize that it, it's terrible. There was no way out of it. <laughs> I would love to sit down with you and just just go over that entire debacle that was the invasion because. It was the first time that we would have ever gotten a chance to to see the you know the best of the best, and obviously contractual reasons prevented a lot of those guys from coming over. And after a couple of months, it just went away. It, it's unbelievable. Yeah, it was, yeah, it was crazy. Um, Dave uh, just did a show with Garrett, and they mentioned how um, because they they had a guy on who had actually was consulting with ideas and angles. For Lance, WWE. why do we take this? We got to cut to a break. We'll pick that up after the break. Guys, Wrestling Observer Live. Andrew Zarin here with my co-host, Lance Storm. We'll be right back. Version. Wrestling Observer Live. Andrew Zarin here with my co-host, the one, the only, Lance Storm. And if you guys were listening to the video feed, we didn't put down Lance's mic. And you guys got a little cool story about how he was potentially going to be Booker T's opponent that night in Tacoma, where WCW ultimately... The doom was set. The end was set that day. Lance, if you were in that match, uh, Linda McMahon would have gotten control of WCW and we would have had a very different trajectory <laughs> of the future of wrestling. I, I That one decision, you see how this butterfly effect works in pro wrestling? Yeah, I, I don't. The match would have been better. I will guarantee you that. But I don't know if anything would have changed. But yeah, I had done a loop of house shows with Booker the weekend before that. And they were considered to be much better than the matches he had had with Buff. And there was a debate in the production meeting of whether they go with me or go with Buff. And ultimately, McMahon decided that Buff's was a bigger name associated with WCW than mine. And they went with Buff's The Stuff, and uh, The Stuff stunk the joint out that and night. And that was it. And that <laughs> that's it. Wrap it up, folks. It's over. Uh, we would have gotten a very different... You know, I love these what-ifs. And, and that's the great thing about professional wrestling. There's tons of what-ifs. Uh, to move on, uh, AW Dynamite this past Wednesday, very good show. Uh, loved the show, top to bottom. Uh, I did not get to watch it totally live. I came in a uh, little after it, it started going on, and uh, you know Keith Lee debuted with as the mystery opponent uh, in uh, in that match. He, I mean, he's he showed what Keith Lee is all about. We also got Jay White making an appearance. Jay White has. Uh, is now working with AEW in some capacity. What did you make of uh, this week's Dynamite? I really enjoyed it. The The tag in the middle was the highlight for me. I'm I'm not as big a fan of the deathmatch, gore, you know, lots of blood stuff, but that, that tag in the middle was phenomenal. And obviously the, the Keith Lee debut was spectacular thanks to uh, I don't remember the name of which one of Private Party was in there, but uh, boy, took some bumps for Keith Lee and made him look like a billion dollars, which was exciting. So yeah, it was a it was it was a big show and it was a good show. And, and that that tag match in the middle, I'm a huge FTR fan uh, oh, as well so as good. Uh, as Punk and Mox, but it's like that was a really great great tag match. And even if there was nothing else on the show, I'd give the show a thumbs up based off that tag. Uh, they're fantastic. I, I mean, you know, when 
the mox mox and punk teaming up i think it came out of nowhere and a lot of people were genuinely surprised i i there was a lot of speculation maybe another surprise it, some people thought dan Housen, but i don't think dan Housen is clear to wrestle yet right i i think he's still a little banged up but you know to put mox and cm punk together uh, to have that great match, you know, I, I got to tell you, they are doing unique stuff uh, that kind of breaks the predictability out of wrestling uh, because this is a very different formula, right? And, and that is a key part of professional wrestling is that the formula that the viewers kind of could anticipate and they kind of know what's going to happen. So they're kind of prepared for it. But this is a very different formula when you have two debuts back to back. I, I can't think of WWE ever doing that. Where you have, you know, Jay White appear on screen and then you have Keith Lee in a debut match. You get this random tag team and then you get that re insane death match, uh, Texas death match at the end of the show. Do you, this formula that they have or maybe maybe lack of formula, you know, as someone that's been in the business for so long, what, what do you make of it? Well, it, it's funny in that, like the formula to me that works, and I've mentioned this several times on my show with with Alvarez on the site it's like, and, and it was um, something that was pointed out to me by Kevin Kelly that Vince used in the Attitude Era of, there's three segments that are important, first, middle, and end, and then you can do whatever you need to in those other segments between. And as long as you have a strong open, a strong middle, and a strong close, it's like you'll maintain your viewers because there's not a long enough period between those three segments for anybody to get disinterested and leave so you can do a short promo or a short match or whatever you need to do to build up other stuff. But when you have the strong open and they had the, the punk um, MJF promo segment to start, which was great. And it's like, okay, you can do the Keith Lee debut. You can do a women's match, other stuff that isn't like marquee big stuff right now. And then you hit that big tag in the middle. And then you can do a couple more segments that aren't big, but are planting seeds and stuff for later and then hit that main event. And it's like, as long as you have those three key segments that are great, I contend you'll always have a great show. Yeah, there's, and, and the thing about this is that there there are key people here that are fitting a, a very different need. Keith Lee is a one in a million guy. Uh, his, his work style is very unique for him. He's a big, gigantic dude, very likable. I always say, you look at this man and, and how do you dislike him? You know, just has that face of a very likable guy, uh, then, you you know, everybody's fitting a role. The other thing that I, I that I feel that uh, people are, are talking about is Jade Cargill over the last couple of weeks. I, I think I said it on Matt Men uh, early in the week and it got picked up places that, you know, there's a lot of eyeballs on Jade now that they, people could see what she could do on TV. Obviously, uh, extremely impressive when you see her. Do, what do you see of her upside? Do you, do you see her having this long-term, you know, trajectory of, of a top female talent in the business, because, you know, she did this interview. She said she's had, I think like 30 something matches at this point. She knows her shortcomings. She works hard at it, but you don't really get too many people that look like her that often. Yeah. If this was a different era, I would say absolutely 100%. She's going to be a gigantic star for a long period of time, but I think it's still too early for me, at least to say that as a definite. She obviously has tremendous upside, tremendous potential, but I think to be a big star long-term, work rate standards are very, very high now. And she hasn't as yet been able to do that great competitive long match. And that's the tough thing with, you know, the giants, if you will. And obviously she's not Andre the giant, but compared to some of the women, she is, yeah. you know, that, it's very hard to have competitive matches while maintaining the Herculean presence of the big person. And it takes a ton of skill to do that. And it will depend on whether she has that ability because coming out and killing people and looking the way she does, you can become a star quickly, but maintaining it long term, I think you need a higher skill level and it's still too soon to tell whether she can get there. I would put her in a similar boat with hook in that regard. Yeah. Another person that's getting tremendous, tremendous. Uh, I mean, the reaction on rampage for hook is, it is, is I'm going to say this and I don't, I don't mean this in negative. It's a shockingly impressive response to him, right? Because you, 
sometimes these things happen organically. Most of the time it doesn't, and it's forced on you when when a character is being propelled into a into a position. But this was so organic, and uh, really, it was the internet, it was the crowd uh, in the arena that kind of has now set this thing in motion for him. And he's getting better and better every week on TV. You can see that, you know, he's adding some more move sets to his arsenal and the response is getting there. He feels more comfortable. But 22 years old, uh, you know, he continues in 10 years. Who knows where he's going to be? Yeah, you really don't. But again, I, I put him in the same boat with Jade in that you have to be able to stay over while selling and making others look good, too. Yeah, to be a true part. long-term top person. And again, not that he should be doing that yet, but hopefully he can in a year or two, you know, ride the wave of popularity of what Hook is now and what Jade is now. But for them to truly still be top people in three years, they're going to have to be able to go out there and make others look good too. Yeah. I mean, we've seen it, uh, you know, Ryback. Another name that came in, you know, Goldberg, Ryback, uh, you know, Wardlow now is doing that, you know, the the big man that that's destroying everybody, Jade. I mean, we've seen this. Uh, it's just a matter of the longevity of it. I always find it interesting. So you you weren't, I did not know this about you. You're not a fan of the, like, the, the blood and guts, for lack of a better term, uh, style matches. I didn't know that about you. Are you being sarcastic? No, no, no. I, I, had, I really didn't. Common no, I knowledge. Didn't know. No, I didn't know but that. I really didn't. No, I, I, it's, I, I don't like gimmick matches. I don't like what I consider to be often crutches to make matches more exciting. That I do think there is a place for them. But to me, again, it's it's the generation I grew up in. It's like it's the last resort after a really long thing that there's this deep hated resentment that gets to the point where you get further but when it is just a you know it's the first match they have we're going to do a texas death match and we're going to use stairs and kendo sticks and you know axes and barbed wire and tacks to me that's not the wrestling i like it's not the wrestling i was a fan of uh, I'm fine if you just go out there and brawl and punch the hell out of each other and there's a degree of blood involved, but I find the paraphernalia and extras used, the smoke and mirrors, if you will, I'm not a big fan of. Yeah, there was a uh, there was a fork spot. There was uh, a no sell of the kendo sticks. Uh, Archer was busted open immediately, and uh, a lot of people, you know, I, I didn't know this. A lot of people didn't know the rules for a Texas Death Match, and that's a, uh, you know, you you got to answer the ten count or submit. And when it was a count out, technically, or, or, or he didn't get up after ten, I saw online on my time on my timeline, people were losing it. They're like, "How does this end in a t in a count out?" I'm like, "No, it's 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 a ten count. This is how it is." We'll be right back after this Wrestling Observer Live. Andrew Zarin here with my co-host, Lance Storm. We'll be right back after this. Wrestling Observer Live. Andrew Zarin here, Sunday edition with Lance Storm. So much is going on in wrestling, man. 2022, It's got. I've been saying this. It's going to be a really interesting year. Matt Cardona wins the NWA World's Heavyweight Championship, defeating Trevor Murdoch. At the NWA Power Trip tapings, we'll now face Nick Aldis at the Crockett Cup. Uh, you know, how do you feel about this, Lance? NWA still that that title is still something, still, still hanging in there. And still I, hanging I in think there. Matt, I think Matt Cardona now officially has the heaviest gear bag in the business. <laughs> I, th I think the dude has like six championships. He he won a title on Impact like last week, and now he won the NWA World's Title, and I think he's got a bunch of others. It's a collective I I had rib. A rough one. I th yeah, I thought it was a rib when I had three in WCW. This poor guy now has like five. Uh, it, interesting, though. You know, uh, Cardona really, what a reinvention of sorts. You know, from Zack Ryder to, uh, you know, he's GCW. I mean, what he did over the summer with GCW was really cool. Uh, even, even recently, he's been doing some really cool stuff. Uh, now wins the NWA World's Heavyweight Championship. Uh, this is a very interesting year. And and obviously, I think we're going to see more of this because of the free agency. I can't remember the last time you had so much, you know, top tier 
you know, recognizable talent that doesn't have a place that they belong to. I really can't yeah, remember the last time this happened. Yeah, it, it feels more like the Wild West, which is always fun. You know, we talked about earlier in the show, Jay White showing up on AEW. It's like, you know, he's wrestling at no, he's actually on Impact Television Thursday, no surrender on Saturday. And, and there's just, there's no limits with the exception of WWE. Oh, you know, even WWE had, you know, Mickey James and, you know, Impact uh, Knockouts champion on their show. It's, it's, it's the, the year that all the rules are broken. Why do you think that is? Do you think it's just, uh, you know, collectively that just the mindset has shifted a little bit? Uh, you know, this whole forbidden door thing. I, I know it's like a, the gimmicky term right now, but to some extent, it's doing something, you know, where where you have Cardona going to the NWA, you have Impact Wrestling with New Japan working together, AEW guys are showing up, uh, Mickey James, like you said, uh, knockouts champion, Impact Knockouts champion showing up in the Royal Rumble. Uh, now, I don't know if this is going to continue for WWE moving forward. Uh, you see this happen every now and then. I think the last time they did something like this was with Liger in in uh, NXT. But do you, what what do you make of this? Do you think this is just the trajectory of the business and this is where it's headed? Well, I think it's a big part of the business. And it was, you know, WWE, you know, having a, a you know, a stranglehold almost on the business for so long that. I think others were more willing to work together. And I, I think on some level, again, you know, younger, newer minds, perhaps being involved in all these companies realize that, you know, if pick somebody, you know, the good brothers go to AEW, it doesn't, it doesn't hurt impact. And it's like, it can help AEW. And if Jay White shows up on impact, it's like, that doesn't hurt new Japan. Not at and, all. and it just makes the product as a whole more exciting. And I think because the business now wants, you know, buzz on Twitter, they want things trending. They want to get people talking about their shows when the show isn't just airing. And by allowing this cross pollination, these revolving doors, open doors, it just, I think it makes the business on the whole more fun. And I think at the end of the day, the diehard fans of every company are still going to stay loyal to their own company. But you know, if their eye wanders over and they catch one of their shows too, it's like, it doesn't hurt the core group. No, not at all. Uh, I want to. I wanted to ask you this. As someone that tr has trained numerous, numerous, you know, b people that we that we see on TV, uh, Nick Wayne was offered an AEW contract at the Defy show. After his match, uh, Darby Allen came out and presented him with a contract. Uh, he had a main event match with Christopher Daniels. It was a you know Brian Alvarez did a fantastic job of summer uh, summarizing this uh, with Dave and uh, Nick Wayne, sixteen years old, was offered an AEW contract. Now there was some rules to this one doesn't kick in till he's 18 and he finishes high school. Uh, this is a very young kid, uh, Buddy Wayne's son. Uh, the, the buzz around him is astronomical. There's a lot of buzz around his ability as a performer at, of any age, and especially at 16 years old. Uh, as someone that trains young talent, older talent, uh, 16 years old to be offered a deal, uh, how, does this, how does this work out? Well, I, I believe it's similar to what you would consider the NIL deals that WWE are offering in that, like, he's not part of the roster. You know what I mean? It's like, you're still in school. I assume there's some degree of a paycheck, probably not a huge one, but it's, you know, they, they've got the rights to him in the future and he's going to, I assume, benefit financially a little bit in the time being. But again, he's got to finish school. I think like I, I met his mom. I, I assume I met him too, but I, I I met his mom and she's she seemed like a really sharp lady with her with her stuff together, shall we say. So I, I think this isn't going to be a problem where I think, you know, signing a 16 year old kid could just blow someone's head up and, you know, turn them into a disaster. Uh, his mom seemed to have a, a really good uh, grip on on life and be a sharp lady. So I, I think I think Nick is going to be fine. And, you know, he, he now has that uh that carrot dangling ahead of him that he knows or that goal that he knows to do so it's like he's got incentive to do well in school finish that up and continue to work hard so i i think this will will end up as a, as a pretty good deal 
And I, I, you know, it's probably not a gigantic investment by AEW, but it, again, it, it gets that buzz that we talk about. And I think creates excitement in the business for talent out there that if you work hard, people will notice. If you put in the work, there's opportunities out there. And I, I think having this surprise of Darby Allen showing up and doing that, it's like, it makes every show more exciting. Yeah, I, I, listen, I think it's fantastic, you know, uh, and, and I hope he's super successful. I hope he trains and continues with this and he has this great career because it, what an amazing story. You know, his father was a wrestler. He, tr he trained at a very young age, which I don't, how do you feel about that to, to be wrestling at, at 16, 15 years old? Uh, do you, do you personally feel that there's a, there's an age that maybe you shouldn't be doing this? I wouldn't accept students unless they were at least 18. I think ideally you want to have, in my opinion, a few years of weightlifting and neck, neck strengthening behind you for a maturity level. And again, I've talked to Chris Nowinski at length on concussions and having a good, strong, sturdy neck really helps that. And concussions at a very young age are more problematic later on because your brain is still learning and growing. So starting too young can be dangerous. Uh, but again, hopefully, because I, I assume his father, you know, wasn't having him, you know, take spine busters and power bombs on his head when he was 14, however young he was when he started. But you do have to be very careful because you don't want to, you know, rack up a bunch of concussions and injuries before your body's even fully grown. Yeah, very, uh, very well said. Impact, no surrender, Saturday, February 19th. Uh, you will be there, right? Yes, I will be there. It's my first my first uh, day at work uh, of my new deal. So, yeah, looking forward to it. Lots of, uh, lots of familiar faces and uh, quite a few SWA graduates from my school, too. Yeah, and, and pretty solid card here. Cardona and Jordan Grace for the Impact Digital Media Championship and an intergender match. You got Black Taurus versus Jonah, uh, Eric Young and Jay White, the Good Brothers versus uh, Gorillas of Destiny. I mean, this is a this is a stacked card, eight matches. Uh, you know, very excited for it. I, I I think that this for Impact especially. I think the last six months have been really solid, and they're continuing this growth. With within you know access TV and everything that they're doing, but it, it is it, it's interesting. Again, another product on TV, another variety of wrestling, a different style. Obviously, they have a very different approach than what AEW is doing, WWE is doing. Uh, I, I'm I'm very hopeful for this. Yeah the the big is it a ten man or an eight man? Ten man, I guess it is. The the Honor No More versus Team Impact. That's the one that's really got me. And again, because I haven't actually gone to work yet, I have no advanced knowledge. All the shows airing now were taped before I started, so I, I can just talk freely what I think because I don't actually know anything. But I thought the angle they did on this past Thursday was one of the most interesting angles I've seen in years in that Josh Alexander got pulled off Team Impact, so they needed to fill the spot. And it's like all of the Team Impact guys are baby faces, and Steve Macklin, who's a heel, wants on the team. And Macklin's been feuding with Ring of Honor's Jonathan Gresham, who's a babyface. He's not part of Honor no more. And Team Impact decided that they wanted to go with Jonathan Gresham, a Ring of Honor guy, instead. And then Jonathan Gresham gets laid out, and Ian Riccoboni vouches for Steve Macklin, and they accept Steve Macklin. And it's like, did Honor no more take him out? Did Steve Macklin take him out? Was he playing possum because we didn't see him t attacked? He might not have actually been taken out. And I'm starting to wonder, it's like, okay, did Ian Riccoboni vouch for him because he's worthy or because the supposed babyface Ring of Honor guys are actually in on it with the Honor No More guys? Interesting. Like there's so many options. Is Steve Macklin actually with Honor No More and he's managed to get his way on this team by having a Ring of Honor guy vouch for him? Like there's a lot of possibilities here. And this is where, again, it might just be straight up. Macklin's an impact guy and he's honorable and this is just legit as we see it. But there is the possibility of that giant swerve, mm. but it's a swerve that would make sense. 
that you can look back on and go, oh, damn, I missed that. And it's like, there's a lot of options. So I'm really curious to see, do we have a United team impact against Anu no more? Yeah, or I, is he a, a Judas, if you will? Yeah, I mean, and you and you look at the card. I mean, the people in this match, fantastic talent. I mean, Matt Taven, Matt, uh, Mike Bennett, PCO. First of all, PCO. Uh, I, it gives me such joy to see that he is still active at 54 years old in a in a in a key match. Uh, again, you know, this is the thing about professional wrestling, right? Never say never. You're never too old to reinvent <laughs> yourself. Uh, you know, wild to see him in this totally a different. It's not even the same person. You know, this is not this is not one half of the Quebecers. Or my former Team Canada teammate. Or your former Team Canada teammate. This is a different person. And I love that kind of aspect of pro wrestling. It gives me such joy when I see just a totally bonkers off the rail character when at one point he was he was a Canadian pirate, right? <laughs> I mean that was his gimmick. He had yes, the he was a pirate. He was. I, I mean, wild, wild, wild. I'll never forget, you know, that dive that Bret Hart did on him, that that is engraved in my mind from that match. I I, I think it was a raw match sometime in like 95, 96, whatever it was. Does this dive on the outside onto him. It, it's like engraved in my mind. And you look back and you look at him now and he's this lunatic, you know, cutting his promos and he's a monster. Frankenstein, you know, Frankenstein's monster, which always works. Uh, very, Not very cool Not everyone can do. Not everyone can pull off a complete reinvention. So you got to give him credit. He went a, a complete, you know, 180 with, you know, PCO. He's not human. And it's like, it's worked out for him. Not human at all. Guys, Wrestling Observer Live. Andrew Zarin here with my co-host, Lance Storm. We'll be right back after this. Andrew Zarin here, Wrestling Observer Live. Couple minutes left with my tag partner today, Lance Storm. Lance let everybody know. I, I mean, we spent an hour talking about this, but what else are you up to? Obviously, Impact Wrestling, big congratulations here. I think everybody's thrilled that you're there because we, we know that, you know, how you think about professional wrestling and how you see professional wrestling. So if anybody's familiar uh, with, with the way you see things, uh, this is going to be a tremendous plus and a tremendous uh, help to uh, that company that's on a upward trajectory right now. But what else are you up to? Well, uh, I do my weekly podcast with Brian Alvarez on the Wrestling Observer site. We've moved to Tuesdays from Friday, same time slot. So you can check us out uh, this coming Tuesday at uh, 3 Mountain, so 5 Eastern. And Impact Wrestling is Thursdays, Access TV in the U.S., Fight Network in Canada, uh, Thursday evenings. And yeah, that's it. I'm working backstage at Impact. Uh, I fly out on Friday, first flight in almost two years. I'm looking wow. forward to it. Wow, wow, wow. I uh, that's listen, a little bit, right? It's getting going. Things are getting going in 2022 <laughs> for everybody. This is a big positive here. I'm excited about this. Lance is traveling. That means everything's going back to normal, guys. Uh listen, if yes. you enjoy the show, if you want to hear what else I do, wrestlingobserver.com. You can check out my show with Garrett Gonzalez every Tuesday for We're Live Pal, Matt Men Podcast on Thursdays. That's my OG podcast. Twelve years. I've been doing it with Rich, my co-host, and of course here every Sunday for Wrestling Observer Live. And now that we changed the setup, a little behind the scenes stuff, we changed our setup on how we connect with uh, the show. And I believe we're going to start taking phone calls again within the next week or two. And now that we can do phone calls, I'm going to do a two-hour show in, uh, in two weeks. We'll do a two-hour show. Uh, open lines, taking your questions, answering your questions. It'll be a lot of fun. Uh, Lance, you know, I want I, I really love doing this with you. Uh, I want to thank you for coming on again. Uh, this is the second time we're doing this. This has become a thing now. You know, all the all the F4W people just, just rotating in, hanging out, and also outside people. You know, we've had Sean on, uh, Dave on. Uh, you know, I like to look at myself as a forbidden door for pro wrestling podcast and media. But guys, that's it for this week. Again, big thank you to Lance Storm here and everybody else that tuned in. Wrestling Observer Live will be back next Sunday. See you next time, guys. <laughs>